Joining me today is my colleague, um, Maona Egberta, who has been looking through what exactly the proposals are and will be helping us put it in better perspective for you. So let's go straight into the conversation. Thanks for joining us again. Pleasure as always, Martin. Right, to start with, we know that the first time as a republic that we had election petition was in 2012, when John Dramani Mahama, uh, following the demise of uh, John Atta Mills, became president in a period of six to eight months, which shocked the NPP. They thought that something untoward had happened. So because of that, they took it to court. Now let's walk through what exactly transpired and why now there's a proposal for a relook at the, the timeline. And so it was the first ever in our, in our history as a country, like you rightly mentioned. And interestingly, that first election petition uh, had a stranglehold on the John Mahama administration, at least for the first nearly one year, because all throughout the first year of his, of his administration, his election into office was being challenged. Mm. In fact, I readily recall on the day the verdict of the Supreme Court was to be delivered, quite a number of people did not go to work for fear of the possible verdicts that could come mm. and then the fear of a possible escalation or outbreak of violence. Such was the nature of, of it, it really all. It was moment. a really tense moment yeah. because it was the first time ever yeah. uh, a presidential election had been challenged. And like I rightly mentioned, it spanned nine months, mm. uh, as a matter of fact. And so after the, the, that that particular presidential election petition, the consensus was that, look, this did not afford the government mm -hmm. the ability and the opportunity to work freely because it had to be doing whatever it was doing with looking uh, over its shoulder to mm -hmm. find out if the judiciary will uphold the election which old. brought them into office or annul it and declare a rerun of the elections. And so mm -hmm. it was agreed upon that there needs to be legislation to ensure that presidential election petitions could be fast-tracked, and so a decision can be taken a lot earlier right. to afford government the ability to be able to work. That is, if, if the court upholds the election which brought them into office, mm. or quickly, there can be an, another election which will bring about whichever government is expected uh, to rightfully right. take the helm of affairs. And so that was done, and the law was passed, which what amended from the nine months that we saw to 42 days. And so in 2020, from being challenged, John Mahama became the challenger when he took the 2020 presidential election to the Supreme Court. Mm. And that was heard and the case judiciously dealt with in 42 days. Right. And so that's the, that's the trajectory as we've had it mm. and we continue to have and, it. And, and like you indicated, this particular period the other reason why many believe it lasted that long was because not just the fact that it was the first time, but they had to pour through lots of pink sheets and voter documents to be sure. That's when they, and then they needed to bring in almost every key figure that was needed to give a testimony to help the, the judges of the Supreme mm. Court at the time also think through. And that was also, also another first for us where we televised um, an election petition or election issue or even the Supreme Court had was, was put live on television on TV for, for everyone to, to follow see. because of the national interest in the subject. Although, like you indicated, it put a certain kind of pressure on the government of the day or those who had won the election, the NDC for that matter, they were um, skeptical in undertaking government business in certain areas because they were unsure how the election petition was going to turn out. Uh, and, and even... Outside of that, what it does for investor confidence for the country is another thing that you can't talk about altogether. Because um, with, with this impasse that's been ongoing in Parliament, we've heard from the, the experts, the business communities, who speak to the fact that with the uncertainty in Parliament, it doesn't bode well yeah. for, for investor confidence. In fact, we are expecting to put uh, deals and some agreements before Parliament to aid our IMF uh, bailout package, which we're currently under. And so just the, the difficulty in Parliament now, it's not allowing for, for, for investor confidence. So imagine an entire government wanting to go into the euro bond market, which was a thing back then, yeah. and then the investors on the international market are looking at you and your finance minister and are asking the question, will you be the ones in charge exactly. 
in the next two years because there's an election petition. Right. So such was the nature of the difficulty mm. in terms of doing business. And so it was trite knowledge. You can really say that, that everybody will agree and come to the consensus that, look, we need to find a way to be able to do this mm. quicker to allow for a smoother transition and to allow for, for the government in power be able to efficiently do its work. Right. And fast forward to the 2020-2021 elections when we had another election petition. And that one, it was interesting how it played out. After the elections, it was uh, the Electoral Commission declared the NPP as winner. The NDC had issues. And across all media platforms and across board, everybody go to court, go to court, go to court. Because there was a precedent. There was a precedent, you know. So it's good that, I mean, I think that it's just normal that in law or per uh, jurisprudence, in case there is an issue that has precedence, you look at the precedence to help you inform or, you know, make a decision on which direction to go. However, there are other questions that have gone unanswered, mm. which include... The nine-month period afforded a lot of people enough time to go through the documents, like I indicated. But a 42-day period, is it enough to look at a total voter population of about, um, I mean, at the time, I think total voter population was about 13 to 14 million people who had turned out to vote. Are you saying that you are going to have enough time in 42 days to go through all those documents, to go through all the uh, pink sheets from the constituencies, over 270 constituencies, and be sure that mm. this decision we are going to make, we have had enough time to cramp through it all. That's interesting that uh, this is the new timelines we are working with if we have to do presidential election disputes when it does ever come and up. Martin, I was mentioning uh, the difficulty in being able to do business and likening it to the impasse that we have in Parliament. Well, there's some news coming in in mm. relation to uh, Parliament as we have it. We know that the NPP caucus had written to the Speaker demanding uh, an urgent recall of the House to engage on urgent government business. Mm. Uh, yesterday we were on uh, the expectation based on a number of the happenings was that it could be recalled early November. Well, right. the speaker has provided a date okay. in relation to when that recall will happen. Let's just quickly walk through, and then we can return to the okay. conversation in relation to uh, presidential and parliamentary election disputes okay. and the time timelines. And so, pursuance to this, we're, we're understanding that the mm. speaker yeah, has... Before, before you get the specifics of it, let's bring you this quick insert, and then we'll bring you the specific details of this uh, news just coming in. Right, so welcome back. So we have some breaking news, and uh, Eric Maunay, but uh, was just giving us Absolutely, a straight on to it. And the Speaker of Parliament has set November 7 uh, as date for Parliament to reconvene uh, to discuss urgent government business, as has been the, the call by the NPP caucus in Parliament. We know that a deputy uh, majority whip had written to the Speaker after garnering the required uh, signatures to force the hand of the speaker to recall parliament to discuss urgent government business. Now we have a date for it. It's the 7th of November uh, 2024. That's the day where the speaker has said, and we're expecting parliament to return and reconvene to discuss urgent government business. If I can just walk you through uh, just succinctly what the statement says is that the right honorable speaker uh, hereby summons parliament to sit on November 7, 2024 at 10 o'clock in the forenoon at the Grand Arena Accra International Conference Center dated in the office of the speaker the 31st day of October 2024 which was yesterday. We're just catching wind of it and so that's the latest in relation to the umpires in Parliament, which we were likening to the current development, and we have an official date and time now for the House to reconvene. I'm sure the conversations as to which side of the House, the NPP and the NDC caucuses will sit will come up uh, a lot later in terms of the conversations that were supposed to have a Martin. That's the, yeah. that's the latest that's coming through right now. Certainly. So...
All right, so that's the news that has just come in. And um, actually, if we look at the letter, it was signed the 31st yes. of October, which means yesterday. yesterday. And it means that in the next six days, Parliament is expected to resume. Absolutely. And yesterday we indicated that the, the Speaker himself was actually out of the jurisdiction for other important parliamentary business, not just Ghana, but, uh, you know, he's been appointed ahead of, uh, you know, some um, parliamentary speaker's leadership. And he was there outside the, the jurisdiction working. And he indicated early November. So now we have a specific date, the, the 7th of November, where Parliament will be resuming. And you indicated... Where is the majority going to sit? What does this even mean for the case that is currently in court? Who would sit where? I'm sure that the, in a build-up to that day, we'll definitely try and make sense of what is expected from either side of the house. Would they just go calmly and stay with the status quo before the speaker's declaration of some four seats vacant? We are uncertain of all of that. But now the news is that Parliament will sit on 7th November, and here at your Election Command Centre, we'll definitely keep tabs on all of that development for you. Talking about Parliament, though. Absolutely, and, and we were actually delving the conversation straight into, into Parliament and parliamentary election disputes. And with, just perhaps maybe rounding up with the, with the presidency, mm. the fact that it has been reduced to 42 days, still many make the argument that it's not quite ideal, mm. and perhaps... If the elections were, were moved to, to somewhere November of the election year, it will afford the courts ample time to be able to have dealt with the election petition before yeah. January 7, yeah. which will be the date to which the, the, the new government will be sworn in. And so yeah. that's a proposal that's been made. But we'll see that that proposal also rear its head somewhere in, in the parliamentary dispute mm. and what, what the judiciary so is expecting. So, again, what we are saying here is that is the 42-day statutory, is that what we are going to go by? Or, like suggestions have come up, that Ghana should consider voting on November 7th or any day in November, in November yeah. to give us ample time before probably... And, you know, it's interesting to know that our statute books do not give a specific date to indicate that parliamentary and presidential elections should be held on the same day. So we can choose to vote for the president now and later vote for parliament. It's become almost or, customary yes. now that, that and bo both is maybe, done on the same maybe day. Maybe as part of the... A review of our constitution and review of our laws, it should be one of the considerations Parliament should look at so that we do not have to force everyone to vote on the same day for presidential and parliamentary. It's a proposal. The, the, the conversation in relation to that um, is interesting because there's a school of thought that if the days are split and the results are known for one, it, it will naturally, it will naturally the affect the outcome of the other because <laughs> if, if the majority or the presidency is won by one side, then the natural Not tendency sure. and the arguments that will be made heading into the parliamentary election is that mm. we've already captured the executive and so give us the legislature so that we can work. And so it's a dicey well, conversation. You know, we should not, uh, so I, I totally agree with you that it has the potential In fact, to it's influence happening, people. It's happening as uh, uh, republics before the Fourth Republic, oh, yeah. which, which lended credence to, to the government who won the presidency mm. or won the parliamentary but to I'm want to sure. have, have I, I, some, I, some influences. In, I in hold a that. different perspective on that, which is that we, we should be able to trust the Ghanaian voter to know that. That is why, over time, some constituencies and even some regions have, have voted, voted skirt and blouse. blouse. means they know who they want to vote for. So we cannot assume that... And even then, there are people who say, well, if you have taken the executive, we will also claim the legislature. So we would vote for MPs. Yeah, so okay. we I mean, should give the Ghanaian some, some, I mean, some level it's an, of respect it's an argument, to know what It's an they argument that, that, yeah. that, can, that can find grounds for a very beautiful conversation yeah. in terms of democracy and how well we're able to practice it. But mm. if, if the argument, particularly this year, strong conversations came up about the possibility of having to move voting day to November instead of December. Mm -hmm. That between November 7 and then January 7 is 60 plus clear days mm -hmm. to the swearing in of a new government. Mm -hmm. And if we were to fit the 42 days of Within a presidential that. election petition uh, inside that, that 60 plus days, more than enough time for a presidential election petition to be dealt with mm. and for a resolution 
and then a subsequent election to be held and then a subsequent declaration which will then lead to yeah. uh, a fresh government coming through without the, the burden of having to look over your shoulders mm. whether or not uh, the judiciary mm. will are now the election that brings you into office. But let's get into... And the, run through that quickly because we need to take a quick break. And, and so with the parliamentary dispute, there's not been a clear timeline or a fixed timeline for the, the, the resolution of parliamentary disputes, yeah. which is why the judiciary is, is perhaps making this call for a legislation to be passed. In fact, it is on record in the fourth Republican uh, 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 democracy that, that we're practicing that the Ayawa Suez Wogun uh, constituency, for instance, had an election dispute which spanned the entire four years mm. of, of, the, of the MP whose uh, election was being challenged. Disputed. And so by the time that the verdict came and said that, oh, you didn't deserve to have won and be member of parliament, yeah. that the tenure of office had elapsed. Right. And so it's gone on and, and on. Richard uh, is another another we, yeah. can, we can make reference to, yeah. which went well over, over two years and Trump. subsequently led to a by-election somewhere last year as well. And so it is what is bringing about proposals which were seen, which amongst many things, the argument is being made that, look, let elections be held in November of every election year and let there be a legislation which allows for parliamentary disputes as well mm. to be dealt with in 42 days. Mm -hmm. That will also fit quite well within the 60 days timeline between November and, and January. then January 7, which will see the coming into force of a new government and then a new parliament as well. Okay. And then we can have more than enough to be able to uh, deal with uh, the, 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 the challenges on that on front as well and then we can make headway in relation and, and, to that. And so we know that here we are told that it's a maximum of 42 days to deal with presidential election disputes. But the proposal is that for the parliamentary dispute, mm. we would have probably uh, 84, a period of 84, 84 days, days to try and resolve whatever impasse that may be when it comes to parliamentary elections. So the conversation we've just had, if you're just joining us on Election 360, is that we know that as of 2012, we did not have anything on our law books that deal with how quickly we can deal with election petitions. But now we have a law that says 42 days for presidential. Coincidentally, we, don't have, we didn't consider that we have two elections, presidential and parliamentary. Parliamentary, we do not have, so there are proposals that between a period of 84 days, we should be able to resolve our parliamentary election disputes. It is now yet, it is yet to be laid in Parliament for consideration. And if it is approved or, you know, accepted by Parliament, then it means that that also becomes law now.